Hey everyone, welcome back to Amber Acres. So, uh, my wife decided she wanted uh, prime rib for uh, Christmas dinner. So, uh, I went out and got me this uh, this uh, Pit Boss uh, wood fired grill from Menards on their Black Friday sale. Um, this here is the uh, 440 D2, whatever that means, I have no idea. But, uh, Anyhow, we're going to put this thing together today and kind of do a little review of it and uh, see see what it does, see how it cooks. And uh, we'll make the prime rib for you and see see what you think. But uh, anyhow, I got this at Menards on their Black Friday sale. And uh, it was $2.29 or something like that. It's normally $2.49. So that was a savings of $120. Bucks, so I really couldn't pass that up. Um, so anyhow, my only question now is, uh, does anybody know what a hickory tree looks like? Because I have no idea where to get hickory wood from. Alright, so I lied to you. I've had a Traeger sitting here for quite a few years. Um, so I know all about wood wood grilling, but uh, I just wanted to mess with your heads there a little bit. So uh, I didn't bore you with taking this thing out of the box, um, but uh, the first observation comparing it to a Traeger, okay? Now remember there's a $400 difference here between the Traeger and this Pit Boss. So comparing it to the Traeger, first, first observation is it's probably half the weight. Okay, so when I got that trigger, I needed help getting it in and out of my, my truck. I could not lift that thing myself. Um, so this thing here is a piece of cake. I picked it up, no problem. Um, and you can tell the metal center, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. You get what you pay for. But anyhow, the trigger stays down here. This one's going up, up north to Amberg um, for the cabin up there. So, uh, you know, we're only up there on the weekend, so it's not, we're not doing a whole lot of grilling, but enough, you know. So, uh, so we're going to start putting this thing together here, and uh, basically it's uh, four legs, a couple of wheels, and then uh, there's a uh, control box that goes in the side here, and uh, that's about it. And uh, I don't think this should take me too long. First issue I had was uh, these screws are pretty chintzy. Um, I tried using my my drill driver, you know, and just screwing them in, and it stripped the Phillips head out right away. So you got to use a socket um, if you want to get them tight. You got to use a socket, and of course it's all metric. So uh, go out and get yourself a metric uh, set. Um, other than that. It's not too bad, it's a little, little flimsy, not too bad.
couple features I like. Inside here, you take your grill grates out, and they have this sliding plate here, which allows the flame to come out and uh, grill your burgers and stuff, so you can get a nice sear on it. Um, that's a, that's a feature that the uh, the Traeger does not have, so uh, that's that's a pretty neat feature. I, I I don't know how it works yet. I haven't used it, but I think that's kind of a neat idea. Um, other than that, the hopper is very small, tiny. There ain't a lot of wood wood chips gonna go in there. Not a lot of pellets. Um, so. I don't know, you know, I mean, if you're cooking a ham or something or something that's gonna be on here for a couple hours, you're gonna have to be sitting out here for, uh, you know, making sure that you got uh, wood pellets in there because uh, that, that's, that's probably a quarter the size of what I have on that Traeger over there. Um, other than that, you know, it's got, a, it's got a serving tray over here on the side, you know, a little little serving tray that's just sitting on the side here got the same bucket to catch the grease um, I always line my interior with tin foil and that way that way the grease doesn't build up I just remove the tin foil and uh, and I you know I I can cook three four five times depending on what you're cooking you know and then you got to remove the tin foil and then when I do that that's when I vacuum out the inside and get the dust and all the, the wood uh, you know whatever it's called the ash the ash out of there um, but uh, the other the other thing that I thought was was pretty good is this uh, it's got a thermometer along with the the controller the controller uh, tells you what you got it set at but uh, this this has the uh, the thermometer here on the trigger I never know what the temperature is inside my grill um, so I had to go buy a separate probe with a thermometer so that I could keep keeping a, a track on what my temperature is at. Now the issue with that is there's no adjustment. So if I have it at 275 and it's only running at 250, you know, it, it is what it is. You can't adjust it. Where, where this one, I'm not really sure how, if there's much of an adjustment either, but, but at least I can see it here. I don't have to go buy another probe, you know. Um, so that's that's a nice feature there um, other than that you know like I said before you get what you pay for it it's it's kind of lightweight and and uh, you know I wouldn't buy it for my home grill but uh, for up north on the weekends it's it'll work just fine for cooking burgers and brats and that type of stuff so why don't we uh, fire this thing up so we got this thing fired up now um, it says you're supposed to run it at about 400 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes or whatever. Uh, there was some oil and stuff in there. You need to burn that all off. So uh, that's what it's doing right now. Um, once it's done, then, uh, then it's ready to cook. You can just fire it up anytime you want and just cook away. So everything worked. Um, it's right at about... Uh, on this thermometer, it's a little over 250, and uh, well, that that's showing you on there that you have it set at 400. It's not actually giving me a. Uh, it's actually not giving me a readout of what it's at. So I guess that's the difference between that and the uh, the Traeger. Also, the Traeger gives me a readout on there of what the temperature is at. So if I'm uh, if I if I have it set at 400 and it's only at 350, it'll tell me it's at 350, but it's not that accurate. Um, so uh, I guess we'll see when we get up to 400 how accurate uh, how accurate that is. All right, we'll be back. Okay, welcome to the kitchen, folks. So uh, what can I tell you about prime rib? So there's basically uh, from what I understand, there's three grades of prime rib if you go to your store. And prime itself is the top grade, which most stores aren't gonna have prime. You're not gonna be able to find it. 
Uh, you might be able to go to a butcher shop or something to that effect, some place that really deals in meat and get yourself a piece of prime, prime rib, okay? But what you'll see in the stores, you're gonna see two other selections in the store. One is choice and one is select. And there's a difference in price. So, I mean, the choice, the choice can be $11.99 a pound, you know, $9.99 a pound. So this, this piece of meat I have here is choice and it was $9.99 a pound at Sendix. Um, I believe Costco was $11.99. Don't quote me on that. So anyhow, the, the difference the difference in the meat is the marbling. So when you look at the side cut of this meat, okay, never mind the fat on top, they're all gonna have that. But you need to see this, the little lines of fat in this meat here, in the red part. If you don't have those lines of fat, then that's gonna be the lower grade of meat, okay? So the top the top prime is gonna have more of the marbling, and uh, and that's that's what you need to look for when you're looking for a piece of prime, you know? So, uh, what it's called in the store, let me get my package here to make sure I'm saying this right. So what it's called in the store is a natural Angus rib roast, okay? It won't be called prime rib, all right? So that's what you're looking for, and I've seen, I've seen different names like beef rib roast or, or, or uh, grass-fed, you know, beef rib roast type, type stuff like that. But it's not gonna be called prime rib in the store. So you gotta know what you're looking for, kinda. Uh, I mean, if you know the butcher or you can find somebody at some of these stores, there's nobody really around that knows anything. Um, you gotta know what you're looking for. So anyhow, prime rib is basically super easy to make, okay? All you have to do is rub it in, leave it in the fridge overnight, and then cook it to the correct temperature. That is the key thing. Um, so my recipe that I use is the uh, Traeger, Traeger recipe, okay? They call for the Traeger prime rib rub, all right? So this stuff's really good. We tried it already, we used it once. Um, uh, you can pick this up at all kinds of places. I don't know, you know. I know this one here, I think I got at Stein's, but whoever, whoever carries the grills usually has the rubs. But uh, anyhow, so you, we're just gonna rub this whole thing in, and then we're gonna wrap it in cellophane, and, uh, and that's about it. Now I've seen recipes where you put slots in the top and you put garlic cloves in there and whatever, and uh, you know, you don't need to do that. If you got a good cut of meat, all you need to do is season it outside. So you get that kind of a crust on there, okay? So uh, let's season this up. I got my uh, I got my uh, venison back today. My sausage and uh, hot sticks. Um, had those done at Marty's uh, over in Rubicon, Wisconsin. Uh, pretty good stuff. So I just dumped this uh, seasoning in a bowl like this, so I can break it up with my fingers a little bit. Um, it tends to get a little clumpy in that can when it's sitting in your ca cabinet for a while. So, uh, so we're gonna start on the bottom here. Now this actual roast has the ribs still in it, has the bones in it. Uh, you can you can go to places like I know Costco has it. It doesn't have the ribs in it. It's boneless. Um, you're probably gonna pay a little more for that. Um, I know at Sendix you can ask the guy, the butcher there. You can have them remove the bones. You can do it yourself if you want to attempt that. But it's my understanding that the cooking it with the bones in actually make gives it better flavor. So. 
this is the first one I've done with the bones in, so I'm, we're gonna try it. And uh, you know, what, what can go wrong, right? All right, so we're gonna season this up here. You just put a general, a real liberal coat of this on there and rub it in. This is, uh, this is basically going to bake away. Probably shouldn't say it like that. It's not really going to bake away. But uh, the, the salt, the salt that's in here soaks into the meat. It's absorbed into the meat. So it really, once it's cooked, you will hardly tell that this is on there, but you'll have a kind of a salty, uh, a salty crust, you know, on the outside. I don't, uh, I don't put it on too heavy. Um, I like it that way. I like a nice heavy crust on there, but my wife does not like the heavy crust. So, um, I also like the pepper, like at the, a lot of the restaurants, you'll get, uh, you'll get a pepper uh, flavored prime rib. And uh, I really like that pepper, but uh, she doesn't care for the pepper. So, we found this prime rib rub be kind of a uh, happy medium between what we both like. And uh, that's what we're using. So I always cook it with this big layer of fat up. Now I've seen different versions of that also. I've seen people where they, they tell you to start it with that down and then flip it over halfway through and stuff. And uh, for me, you know, that fat's going to break down and it's going to run into the meat. And that's what makes the meat juicy and tender. And, uh, and that's gonna, I, to me, that makes gives you the best, the best roast out there. So there it is. Um, you can already, you can already see that that's uh, soaking into the meat. That meat's changing colors a little bit, you know. So now what you need to do is once you have this all rubbed in nice, okay, to your liking, and everybody's gonna be different. Um, I made a beef tenderloin last year for Christmas, and uh, just before I put it on the grill, I took freshly cracked green and uh, and black pepper uh, corns, and I crunched them up and you know rubbed it on that that beef tenderloin. Oh man, was that good! And you could do the same thing with this if you wanted to, just before you put it on the grill. But like I say, my wife doesn't really care for pepper, so so we're making it for her this year. See, we're not really having anybody over except for my dad. So, we're going to wrap that like that. And that's about it. Now I'm going to put a I'm going to put another wrap going the other way and seal this up pretty good so it doesn't drip or anything in in my refrigerator. But uh 24 hours is what it calls for in the refrigerator and uh, I mean it wouldn't have to sit that long I mean if you had it in there for 12 hours it would be fine that, that way too you know I mean it's it's just what they call for is 24 hours in the fridge so I'm probably a little early here we're gonna have uh, dinner at 4 o'clock tomorrow it is uh, noon right now um, so I probably got it in there a little early, but whatever, it's gonna sit for 26 hours, who, who cares, you know? 
um, just so this has time to absorb into that meat. And uh, but it should be really good. All right, guys, we're gonna see you tomorrow. All right, to cook this thing. So uh, one last thing I want to share with you here is uh, before we start cooking tomorrow is uh, this this isn't a bad thing to go and get yourself. Okay, now my Traeger does not have a probe on it which I didn't realize that when I bought it that, you know, maybe I should have went up a model to get the probe. But uh, you can go out and get one. Um, I forget what I paid for this. It wasn't that much. And uh, it has a transmitter and then it has a receiver, okay? So the only issue I have with this is I have to leave the receiver right here by the window where the grill is on the other side of the window outside or it loses its signal. It doesn't have a very good distance to it. And uh, that's my biggest complaint about it. Now I tried one before I went and bought this one. I tried a cheap model that worked on my phone. You know, it was an app. Well, that didn't work at all. As, long, as soon as it got below 30 degrees outside, it just stopped working, you know, period. So, uh, so this one works in the cold, but it doesn't have a very good distance on the receiver. But anyhow, what you get in the package is you get uh, you get the the uh, the transmitter and then the receiver. Um, you got two probes. One goes in the meat, and then the other probe is for the temperature of the grill. Now I'm going to use this to check that grill out there. When I had that running yesterday to burn the oil and stuff off on the inside, according according to the controller, I was at 400 degrees. But that thermometer wasn't above 300. You know, the thermometer that's on the hood? So, I don't know, you know, either that thermometer isn't working or the controller's not reading right, or, or it has something to do with where that probe is inside there uh, for the controller that it's right too close to the heat source and it needs to be somewhere else. Um, but anyhow, this gives you this little clip. It clips in your grate and then that probe goes through it and you can put this right right on the grate next to the meat, you know? And then and then that'll give you a decent temperature of what kind of heat you have right where your meat is sitting. So it's it's actually a pretty good little unit except for that it doesn't go very far. You can't be very far away with the receiver. Um, so we're gonna get this all set up tomorrow and uh, we'll continue showing you how this how did we cook this prime rib. All right, see you tomorrow. Okay, folks, it is really cold out here today. It's only like 17 degrees. So, the thing I was talking about yesterday is uh, this thing's telling me that the grill is at 500 degrees. I have it on high. And this thermometer here is at 375. I have my probe in there and the probe is also reading about the same as this. So what this thing's reading here, there's a probe inside here that runs this controller. It's not accurate. It's not it's not at 590 degrees. There's no way it's at 590 degrees. So um, <clears throat> so we're going base we're gonna base it off of this thermometer here and my probe. That's how we're going to control the heat today. Um, so, on high, whatever it gets up to, that's the best I can do. Okay, 15 minutes. This is going to go in at for 15 minutes, and that's going to that's going to sear the outside of this uh, this meat and kind of give it a crust. And then we're going to drop it down to uh, 200 degrees, and then slow cook it for about uh, roughly two hours. We're hoping. So. Let's get this in there. We're going to stick our meat probe. We're going to stick it in the side here, as far in as we can go. So then we're like right in the middle of that main piece of meat.
Great, I will see you in uh, 15 minutes. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes. The issue I'm having is uh, this thing ain't even getting, ain't, it's barely getting up to 350 in this temperature out here. It's not real windy, but you know, at 17 degrees, it's just not heating up the way it should. So, uh, so I'm just going to take a quick peek at it, and then I'm going to dial this back, and I'm going to try and maintain on my Pro, I'm going to try and main to 200 degrees. So I might have to turn this up to uh, like 250 or 300 almost on this, on this dial in order to get that to stay at 200 degrees. Um, so we're just going to take a quick peek at it. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's browning over a little bit, not not as good as it should be, but um, it'll still be all right. So I'm gonna dial this back just a little bit, and uh, we're gonna try and maintain the 200 degrees on uh, on my probe, and uh, then it'll still cook, you know. So uh, I put it at 300 and see what it ends up at. So uh, we'll see you in about uh, two hours or so. Well, folks, we went uh, way over on time here. And uh, because it's so cold out here, it's uh, like 12 degrees right now. Um, this thing really struggled to keep temperature. Um, and I'm not blaming the grill. I'm just blaming the weather. It, it, it's a bad night to be making a prime rib on a grill. But... Uh, Anyhow, I had to have this set at uh, 300 degrees to maintain uh, the 200 degree temperature that I wanted the meat to be cooking at. So, uh, so it kind of struggled to keep up, and uh, and uh, so we went over. We're we're way past our time for heating. But anyhow, it's done now. It's at its internal temperature of 125 degrees. So uh, I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to cover it with tin foil and. Uh, it has to sit 15 minutes before we can cut it. So I'm going to get this off of here and we're going to go uh, go wrap it up. Boy, that looks really nice. see you in 15 minutes okay so it's been sitting 15 minutes um, now I left my probe in we pulled it at uh, 125 and it is now almost at 135 so it went up uh, 10 degrees just sitting here on the counter so and it looks it looks beautiful I'm just going to take my probe out of there. Oh, that looks nice. So as far as the grill goes, I don't think there's any issue with the grill. I think it was just a temperature outside. Um, this this looks beautiful, so I don't see any issue with using that grill to make this kind of a meal. Um, so I'm going to try and slice right along this bone here. Inside, it's just the way you want it. 
All right, folks, I gotta eat. So uh, Merry Christmas, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And I uh, have a good new year also. Let's finish our review. Um, it's nine degrees out here this morning, so we ain't gonna take very long. But uh, anyhow, I looked into this controller here last night. So on this panel, there's a there's a P setting here, what's called a P setting, and you can adjust that. It comes uh, preset at number four, P4, and uh, what that does is it it changes the time of how much time it's on and how much time it's off as far as the auger augering wood into the fire. So they have a little chart in the book here. So the the lower the number, so a P0, it's on for 18 seconds and it's off for 55 seconds. And then as you go up, so a P4 is on for 18 seconds and off for 115 seconds. So I tried switching that last night and uh, I went down to a two, so I figured it would be augering more wood in there and whatever. And it really didn't do a whole lot. So the whole issue last night was the wind, the cold. Um, this unit doesn't have the smokestack like my Traeger does. So that smokestack, you can dial that down, you can close that off a little bit and, and it'll hold some of the heat in, more of the heat in and the smoke in. Um, this has uh, like, they've got like four holes here in the back. That's where the, the smoke is supposed to come out of. Well, the wind was actually just blowing in, you know, from the back. And you can see the smoke just pouring out under the door here, you know, which, uh, so that was part of my issue with cooking last night. But uh, all in all, you know, the prime rib turned out fine. Nothing wrong with it. Um, everybody was happy. But if I'm gonna give this grill a rating, so let's use a five star scale, I would give it a three. And my Traeger over there, I would only give a four because it doesn't have the probes. Um, I kind of have the same issue with that when it gets cold like this, but it's only, it's only about a 20 degree difference, 25 degree difference, where this was almost a 100 degree difference last night. Um, and it could be just, you know, the way this door is sealed up, the way the the venting is, um, you know, that's heavier metal over there. You know, I don't know that that helps insulate it, but uh, you can get an insulated cover for this. So they have them on their website. You can go and buy one, and I'm sure that would help to hold that heat in last night. Um, but, you know, I would give it a three, you know, and, uh, and it's a nice grill. It, it looks nice and everything, and it works. I love the smoked flavor. Um, I don't think I would ever go back to a gas grill. And for the price you paid for it, uh, two twenty nine, dollars you can't, really can't beat this. Because I, I think a gas grill, you're up at three, dollars $400 for a gas grill nowadays. You know? So uh, it is a little bit of a smaller unit. Um, they have other models that you know are bigger, like the Traeger over there. It's quite a bit bigger. So, uh, you know, I, I would have no issue buying another one of these if I needed one. And uh, it worked just fine. So, uh, you know, hopefully once the weather warms up this summer, you know, I'll be able to, to mess with this P setting and get it set so that my probe is reading more what this controller is reading. Because um, I, don't, I don't understand, you know, if this is reading... 300 degrees why don't I have 300 degrees in here that's in my head that's the way it should be working but um, it's not and, and uh, like I said I have the same issue over there with the Traeger so um, you know not a not a problem you know not a problem it's it is, it is what it is it's grilling you know so uh, you know it's a nice grill you know have fun with it and uh, you know Enjoy your Christmas, you know, and New Year's, and uh, we'll see you next time.